This week on Crossfeed. Prevented all tree. Get a sex plan. Unclean shoes. All God's creatures got a place in the choir. Faith healing and abuse. And wearing your religion on your hat. Hello, everyone, and welcome to CrossFeed Religious News. I'm Pastor Dale Critchley, pastor of Shepherd of the Ridge Lutheran Church in North Ridgeville, Ohio. I'm Pastor Jim Butler at St. Luke's Lutheran Church in Dedham, Massachusetts, our fair city. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Um, after a bit of a hiatus, and Father's Day and a few other things in there that uh, took a little time off. So, um, we're happy Dale's to be just back. lazy, folks. That's what it comes down to. <laughs> He took last week off. Why? Because he had five, he had uh, twenty five kids to get ready for for VBS. I'm doing it this week. I have a hundred and five kids to get ready for VBS. <laughs> you know, so four times the kids, but I don't get four times the pay. <laughs> <laughs> they pay you. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um. In fact, I had to, this morning I was, um, I was preaching on the, uh, gospel lesson about, um, choosing or about loving your, your family more than, um, more than Jesus. And, um, and I talked about all the things I used barnacles as a, um, as an illustration, all the things that we cling to, um, instead of clinging to Jesus. And, uh, and actually, I talked about, you know, you know, look at your house and, uh, because I was talking about, look at your, your finances. Where does your money go? Um, you know, that'll give you a good indication of what you're clinging to. And of course, for most people, their biggest expense is a house payment. And, um, and, and, you know, while that's pretty normal, what, you know, uh, what went into your decision to buy that particular house? You know, was it status or, or what was it? And, um, and, and I said, now I, on the other hand, have a beautiful house. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Cause I live in a parsonage that they did a lot of renovation on right before we moved in. So, but, uh, of course, yeah. when you retire, you'll have no equity and you'll have no place to live, but that's another story. Eh, I'm uh, never going to retire. So, <laughs> so you know, I, uh, it's one thing about my house, you know, I mean, it's, it's nice to own in my own place. Yeah. I preached on that too. Uh, the title of my sermon was Jesus First. Uh, <laughs> I don't think anybody in my church got the joke, but... Uh, <laughs> Some of our listeners will. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, Jesus says, you know, anybody likes things more, more than me, Jesus has to come first. So, um, and um, But that, that was a little fun. Anyway. Oh, where should we begin? Uh... Well, let's put let's put Muslims first here with wearing the hat. All right. We have it just sort of worked out weird that we ended up with a lot of Muslim stories this week. These are oh. actually these these stories are, are from a few weeks ago when we were going to do the show and it got canceled. Um, and uh, so I didn't pick out new stuff because there wasn't a lot of new stuff. Uh, next week we'll do the uh, the sexting um, um, Amish guy. <laughs> Oh, I thought we were going to talk about Anthony Weiner, but anyhow. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, so we've got a, a taxi driver in St. Louis. Uh, his name is Nabil Langriel. He's a Pakistani. Yep. And he's Muslim. And um, he wears a reddish-brown cap called a kufi uh, that has religious meaning. Um, but it's a dress code violation. And, um, so in essence, his, uh, because of his dress code violation, um, because they're, they're allowed to wear or the, the, they're supposed to wear black pants, black closed toed shoes, socks, and white shirts. Baseball hats are allowed as long as there's no writing other than that of the taxi certificate holder. And, uh, so he's wearing this other hat and, um, and then, uh, basically his car got, uh, 
Well, anyhow, he was um, waiting for something, and a guy from the Metropolitan Taxi Cab Commission um, came up and said, uh, you know, he um, uh, uh, wanted to inspect things and said that his hat was not uh, didn't conform to the dress code. Um, and then he asked him for his license, and the guy says, I, you know, I'm not going to show you my license because he didn't know what license he wanted to see. Taxi cab license or driver's license, and he didn't know who this guy was, and he was going to show him his driver's license. And so the guy said, "You can't do anything." Uh, matter of fact, to put an out of service tag on 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 the cab. You're not allowed to drive. Um, and at that time, the doorman at this hotel said he got a passenger, so he ran over to get the, get the passenger, and he got in all this trouble then because he was driving the cab without, you know, when it's supposed to be out of service, and yada yada yada, and it's supposed to be inspected. And a whole bunch of trouble for absolutely no reason at all. Yeah, all because of a hat. All yeah. because of a hat. This, 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 this is the kind of bureaucratic nonsense I'd expect to see in Massachusetts. <laughs> I thought, man, I thought St. Louis had a lot more sense than this. So, um, no, further complicating it, um. This guy was offered a formal variance to wear the hat, but has never formally applied for one. Right. And, um, you know, so there's this, there's so many questions to this story because there's sort of like, okay, he could have done the sort of steps necessary to get permission to wear it, and he didn't. So why didn't he? And, you know, um, there's... Well. Uh, should he have to? Do what must be done. Uh, well, yeah, and, and, and you know, you know, I, you know, think it's kind of silly anyway. Um, but, you know, and then, of course, it said that, you know, uh, uh, part of the problem was this was uh, Langriel's um, attitude, behavior and attitude. Well, unless you have somebody else to give witness as to what his attitude was and his behavior was, mm -hmm. yeah, what somebody might see as belligerent, you know, I might see as being, um, you know, testy or you know, polite. As a matter of fact, I think you know, you know, maybe he believed that the um, agent guy is overstepping his authority. And says he's being uncooperative. He's not being helpful. He's around here giving me orders, demanding to see my license. He didn't show me any identification. He didn't tell me who he was. Mm -hmm. Right. So, yeah, it's, you know, you've got the situation where somebody who's in a um, superior position is uh, causing problems for somebody who's in a lower position over kind of a, you know, really a, while technically a rule, um, you know, there's 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 rules, and then you you sort of realize some of these rules aren't well written, and so um, you don't you're not going to work real hard at enforcing them. It sort of reminded me of um, this weekend we were uh, hitting a bunch of rummage sales uh, because it was one of the nearby towns uh, was having their um, like citywide rummage sale kind of thing, and. And as we were going around and going to some of these places and, you know, picking up some kids' clothes and stuff like that, and, um, and I was, I was thinking, boy, you know, there was, uh, not too long ago, uh, just like a week or two ago, there was some kids that, um, got busted for running a lemonade stand without a license. Yep. And, uh, and I was thinking, gee, how many of these people that have rummage sales have a license? And the city's sponsoring them by, um, making lists available of, of where all these people are and, you know, and they're encouraging it. And, and I just right. thought now how, you know, now obviously whether it's a kid's lemonade stand or a, a rummage sale, this isn't the sort of thing that you should need a license for. All right. Well, in this case, it's, this is a professional thing, but you know, he, they're allowed to wear a hat. Well, the hat that he chooses to wear isn't a baseball cap. It's a it's a cap that's um, has a particular religious significance, and it's not something that's uh, you know real outlandish or anything. He's not wearing a sombrero, you know. Right, he's not. And and, uh, um, and in two thousand four, the Missouri Supreme Court 
upheld a circuit judge's decision barring enforcement of the dress code against drivers who certify their religious beliefs to prevent them from complying. So, you know, it's, um, you know, um, I don't know how formal a permit process for a variance has to be, but it seems to me to say, look, you know, I'm a Muslim or, and, and, you know, whatever, you know, and I wear this hat for this reason, for religious reason. Guys, said, okay, I can't argue with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, uh, it, you know, it'd be one thing if the hat were advertising another company or something like that. If it, if right. it said Nike on it or something like that, you know, then you can say, well, uh, we can't. I worship the Greek that. god Victory. Yeah. <laughs> Swoosh. <laughs> and I'll, uh, I'll, I worship, you know, I'm a member of the re, this, the re, local religious order of the St. Louis Cardinals. Uh, <laughs> so, um, well, okay, there's uh, uh, Kim, and then another one that just blew me away, and that was your other Muslim group here, the Iranian women's soccer team. Mm-hmm. And um, they had a game, now this is... Uh, I don't know what what oh, this is from from the wash through the Washington Post, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, they wanted to they were playing in a game um, supposed to play a game for to qualify for women's soccer for um, um, the 2012 London Olympics, and they were playing Jordan and a mom, and the uh, FIFA the International Football Association dismissed them. Um, because they uh, had their head coverings on, and that broke the association's dress code. And Jordan was given a 3-0 victory. Yeah. Um, this is, uh, the Islamic Republic of, Ir- of Iran, all women are obliged to cover their hair, neck, arms, and legs, according to the state's interpretation of Shiite Islamic tenets. Female athletes who compete internationally have to obey the country's dress code. Iranian women athletes have excelled during international events in sports such as karate and volleyball, but are notably absent from sports such as swimming and gymnastics. All right, understandable there. Um, In April 2010, uh, FIFA FIFA announced that it was planning to ban headscarves and other religious outings during the 2012 Olympics. Following the ruling, Iran's team designed special headscarves the players wrapped tightly around their heads and necks. The team said they were in line with guidelines set by the Football Association. All right. So they're saying that that a headscarf covering a woman's neck is banned for safety reasons, um, according to an unidentified uh, FIFA official. But um, it was, you know, if they designed special ones that would handle that without... Um, you know, and be safe and everything. I, this is one of those situations where they should be, they should say, okay, well, let's work this out. You know, I mean, I, I look at the, 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 the way the scarves are, are the picture here. Um, and the scarf seems to be pretty tight fitting. It's not going to be, it's not loose. You know, I understand. I understand. We're talking Edna here from, um, you know, the Incredibles. No capes, darling. You know, too much dangerous. I can understand that. I mean, you know, somebody could run by, get this long scarf, grab it, pull your neck, hurt you. I understand that. But I don't see how the, the scarf, the way these head coverings are, are, are made, they're, they're, they're tight fit. They almost look like a swim cap, actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, they really do. Uh, um, that I don't see how that can that cause the, dan- the problem. Yeah, in fact, I was thinking about this. They said that they're absent from sports like swimming. I was thinking they could get one of those burkinis, <laughs> that, yeah. and then they could be in swimming too. They could make them out of that material that that they're making all the um, the women's swimsuits out of that are, you know, that's supposed to help you go faster in that. Come on, Iran. Uh, well, it has to be twenty sixteen now, right? I want to see a swim team. <laughs> if you can't be an athlete, be an athletic supporter. So. Uh, this is, um, you know, now it's interesting. I'm not sure because they said that they were told on that, that Irene was told on Friday before the concert, thoroughly informed that the, that the, the scarf was was banned. Um, um, 
the earlier, you know, earlier, the second paragraph says the official decided just before kickoff. Um, so I, which is it? Was it two days before kickoff or was it just before the kickoff? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or, but you know, the, their, their coach, their, 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 one of their head coaches, the, the former head coach said, you know, if this is true, then women's soccer in Iran's done because they're not going to get to go play anywhere if they can't wear the headscarves. The Iranian government won't let them. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, you know, this is the, the football organization, which is read by allies of, uh, President Mahmoud Ademajad, or however you pronounce his name, planned on protest the ruling. Well, okay, um, you know, I guess I like Crazy that. Harry is the, 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 the governor, uh, the president of Iran, um, but I'd say keep, further keep him away from it, the, the pot, better, <laughs> better. Yeah. Yeah, but, you know, so there's this quote, um, says, uh, when a serious woman, when, uh, typo, uh, when a serious woman athlete can't participate internationally, what, which ambitions are left for her? And I think I have an answer for her. Slavery. Oh, that's not right. No. Ooh. That's a segue. Yes. <laughs> That's my job to do this. Right? <laughs> but yes, that's true. That's a nice segue, though. I give, I'll give that, a, I'll give that an eight. <laughs> I have to say, this has got to be the most bizarre story that we have tonight. <laughs> We've got a, a female. And Ale just wishing he was Kuwaiti right now, boy. He just, <laughs> man, I'd like to be Kuwaiti. <laughs> Anthony Weiner wants to be Kuwaiti. This will take care of his problem. Bill Clinton wants to be Kuwaiti now. Hey, well, you know what? One of our viewers uh, just got back from Kuwait, actually. Shout out to Jason. And uh, Jason, we better have a talk. <laughs> so, <laughs> All right. Uh, so, um, a, uh, Salwa. Hand, says he hated Kuwait. He says Kuwait was the most boring place to be in in the Mideast. So, he it has been two hours in Kuwait. He said that was two hours too long, but he's glad it was left. But maybe oh, so. that's why. <laughs> anyway. He just so, didn't shop in the right place. <laughs> Kuwaiti politician has called for the legalization of sex slavery, saying it would protect decent, devout, and virile Kuwaiti men from adultery. And it would keep them from being seduced by another woman's beauty. <laughs> we'll just let that sink in for a minute. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I like it. They call her a social activist. What kind of social activist is she? <laughs> <laughs> this is a little and, backwards there. Yeah, and they would bring in prisoners from war-torn countries, and they would have a better life as these men slaves, and they would not die of starvation. Right. They'd just be slaves for the rest of their lives and, you know, <laughs> raped repeatedly. Oh, that's much better. She, uh, her name is uh, uh, Sal Salwa Al Mutari, and she says that she's chucked out with this people with Muslims there in Kuwait, and they said that's right. The only solution for a decent man who has the means, who is overpowered by desire, and does not want to commit fornication, is to, to acquire jahari. Jahari is the plural form of the Arabic term sex slave. For example, in the Chechenian War, surely there are female Russian captives. So go buy, so, so go and buy those and sell them here in Kuwait. Better to have our men engage, better than to have our men engage in forbidden sexual relations. Oh, and they should consider the woman's feelings in all this, and the female prisoner should be at least, at least 15 years old. <laughs> it just gets better and better, doesn't it? <laughs> So, I, and, you know, the the big irony here, the you know, and and we talked, uh, we we talked about the all the the pornography that was found in um, Osama bin Laden's compound, and how this is a pretty common thing for uh, to find uh, among militant Muslims. You know, it's and this this whole idea where you sort of pick and choose from your laws. Like we got to follow the law to the letter. Well. 
you know, let's see, we're not allowed, no fornication is allowed, but it doesn't say anything about sex slaves. You know? <laughs> well, they're concubines. That's, that's what it is. You see, if they're free women, they are, they, you must marry them, and you're allowed more than one wife. But if they're slaves, they're concubines. A man just buys her, and that's it. And that's okay. Yeah. And uh, she checked it out. Uh, she asked Muslim religion on a recent visit to Mecca. She asked Muslim religious scholars what the Islamic ruling was on owning sex slaves, and was told that it is not haram. It is not uh, fornication. Uh, after all, there's an 8th century Muslim ruler, leader, Harun al Rashid, who was rumored to have 2,000 mistresses. Man, I thought Solomon was just something with a, with a, a harem of 1,000. He, he had them beat. Yep, yep. Yeah. So, and, I mean, and did, did he have them numbered? How else would you keep track of them all? <laughs> you know, I, I think I've seen you somewhere before. <laughs> yeah, no Haven't kidding. we met? Yeah. I'm West number 738. Ah, that's where I saw you. <laughs> that's where I've seen you before. You know, you're familiar? <laughs> I, I mean, you know, this is one of those stories that you, you just like, okay, you know, it's it's so, you know, sort of far gone on the ridiculous meter that you just kind of go, what? You know, but this is an actual politician and it's a woman on top of it right. that you know yeah. <laughs> and of course her, her 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 suggestions went out on youtube and uh one person tweeted to mutari you're a disgrace to women everywhere <laughs> I, I think mean, i have to agree <laughs> I, to, I mean there, there, are, there, there are laws i want to she realize there are laws across the world against you know traffic you know, white against sex trafficking. Yeah, yeah, they're uh, I mean, unfortunately not always followed, but uh, yeah, you know, human rights and all that. Well, you have to take into account though that this is Kuwait, all right? And um, you know, according to the description of of Kuwait that I got, uh, basically the people in Kuwait nobody really works a whole lot um, because everybody's so rich from oil. That um you know they bring in the third party nationals the people from India, um to work all the menial labor jobs, and uh, and they just sort of live off of oil money. And uh, you know so when you when you don't have to work and you, and you just sort of live in luxury all the time, and and they treat the the third party nationals like dirt, you know they they have a very skewed view of of um you know, the value of human life and, and things like that. But, you know, there's also, this is a very common thing in, um, at least in Middle Eastern uh, Muslim cultures, their view of women is, is very, very different from, well, from the Christian view or, or from, for that matter, from most of the rest of the world. Um, uh, I, I think that, that a case could be made that the reason that most of the rest of the world has a um, higher view of women than this is because of the influence of Christianity. Um, but uh, I just just sort of floored by this. I <laughs> I don't know. I mean, the, the the reality is, and 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 he can't. I I mean her. her her view of women, it really is just messed up. I mean, it, this is just, it is treating women as objects and as things. Mm -hmm. And I, decent, devout, virile, Kuwaiti, Kuwaiti, Kuwaiti men. Oh my goodness. Okay, well, let's move on here. Uh, may, maybe, maybe, maybe to prevent the men from adult, uh, from from committing adultery, they need to be the women need to be wiped down with ham. <laughs> right. So, okay. So this is from the UK, the Daily Mail. This is almost as bizarre, but not quite. Yeah. 
Okay, and there is this guy, Jamie Nolson, 30 years old, who really looks... Wow. <laughs> he looks sad. <laughs> White shirt and poked out a tie that don't match. Oh, man. Anyway, who, who left this guy out of the house? Um, so he... Um, there were a bunch of Muslims who were worshipping in the mosque, and he stuffed their shoes with ham... And then he draped slices of ham all around the mosque so that the um, uh, uh, Muslims could not worship and they really couldn't grab the rails or anything coming outside because they're not supposed to touch any pig meat. Yep. So all right, he was drunk when he did it. And at first he, he claimed that, um, oh, well, it's because I was drunk, but then later admitted that he was fully aware of uh, what he was doing and what effect it would have. I mean, obviously, when you do something like this, it's not, I mean, this is a, a really deliberate thing. Um, you know, it wasn't that he, he did use um, beef or, or or lamb or something like that. It was pork. Why? Because he knew that um, just like uh, Jews, Muslims will not touch pork. So I remember we had a, um, when I was working at McDonald's in college, uh, we had a guy who was Muslim and, uh, and the McRib, he, 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 he'd sell them, <laughs> but he wouldn't eat them. And, uh, I, you know, I don't remember whether he would touch them or not. I mean, not like we went, <laughs> you know, we were sensitive about these things, but, uh, but you know, we we knew that. All right, he he doesn't eat pork. It, it's it's it, you know, and it must have been a, a bit of a sort of personal conflict for him to be, right. you know, selling this stuff. I'm amazed this guy hasn't been killed for this uh -huh. act. Uh, yeah, but uh, you know, kudos to the I, Canadian I, I, I Muslims. Love his defense lawyer. This was a brutal, misconceived, drunken prank. You know, buddy, it's it's not a drunk. It's not a prank. This is, this is, this was, he did it deliberately to insult them. This guy's a loser. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I have one question. There is a word that keeps popping up in all of this. Uh? What's that? And it's used at least three times. Uh? That he is racist. He's a racist who filled Muslim shoes. He's a racist thug in the picture of him. Uh, uh, racist Jamie Dolson. I didn't know that Muslim was a race. Yeah. <laughs> Prejudiced? Yes. <laughs> racist? Think about this. No. <laughs> <laughs> there is no Muslim race. If anything, yeah. this shows the prejudice of the writer of the column. <laughs> or well, ignorance, at least. <laughs> What racism is. Yeah. I just thought they're going, huh? <laughs> I mean, the guy's obnoxious, rude, um, anti Muslim. It's, yes, this, you know, you talk about, you know, what qualifies as a hate crime. This qualifies as a hate crime. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, he pleaded guilty to causing racially or religiously aggravated harassment. That's what it is. It's a religious, religiously aggravated harassment. Right. Yeah. And, he, it was specifically. You know, he, he's an anti Muslim, but he's not a, necessarily a racist. There is no, you know, it's not like, you know, being Jewish. You know, it's. There's no right. Muslims. Yeah, because Muslims are, you know, contrary, you know, most Americans, this is in Canada, I don't, I don't, I can't speak for Canadians, but, um, you know, most Americans, you say Muslim, and they automatically assume. Uh, sort of Middle Eastern Arabic uh, language speaking, they you know, Arabs. and um, and but actually, um, you know, the was it at least I'm trying to remember how the statistics went. Mo Arabs count for about sixteen percent of Muslims. Yeah, um, I mean, there are more Muslims in um, the areas around Afghanistan and that area, you know, that used to be part of the Soviet Union. Um, you know, they're very heavily Muslim, but they're not Arab. Right. 
Great. And you go over to like Indonesia. Um, you know, they're not Arabs. And, right. uh, and, but that's, uh, you know, overwhelmingly Muslim. India has a lot of Muslims, but that's not, uh, they're not Arab, they're Indian. Uh, Iraq, Iran, they're not Arabs. They're Persians and Assyrians and a bunch of other different things. Yeah. Most Americans don't know that. We know they're the sort of, uh, um, different white ethnicities. German, English, Spanish, you know. But, uh, you know. Yeah. You, you, Watch out for anybody who says something about the Irish. They might be, you know, racist there. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. No, no, they say something about the Catholics. Yeah, the Catholics. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah, it's the same thing. You have Irish Catholics and Polish Catholics and uh, um, uh, uh, Italian Catholics, you know, but, you know, to be, if you're no nothing, you're anti Catholic. Doesn't make you racist um, against Irish, you know, uh, just, anyway. But the guy's a loser. I mean, he even looks the part of a loser. No, he's probably drunk when he got dressed. But um, six months suspended sentence, 150 hours of unpaid work. It says a premeditated yeah. attack. Well, yeah, it had to be premeditated. He had to go to the store and buy the pork. Right. Uh, he And it says something that, oh, he was, uh, uh, he crept to the mosque. Well, maybe he was just hiding the homeless shelter. He wasn't actually living there. That I don't know. Of course it was premeditated. The guy's a jerk. So... Yeah, he returned to the mosque and offered his apologies in person. Please, please don't kill me. Plus, it's a waste of good pork. That's for sure. I'd rather have a sandwich. You know. Uh, so if you if you if you take it out of their shoes and cook it up, is it soul food? Ooh. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But maybe then be filet of soul. Um, soul filet. All right, well. If you don't make them into pork in the first place. Okay, you know, you know what? You have to leave the pigs alive. Not sure. You know what? You, why don't you just worship the darn pig? Why don't you just make your own pig church? There you go. Oh, huh? too late. Also in Canada. Yeah. That's what the where are the weird people in Canada? I, I, weird, two weird people in Canada. Uh, Canadians have always been nice people, <laughs> right? So, uh, an Alberta zoo uh, that is owned by is called the Goo Zoo, uh, owned by Lynn Gustafson, thus the Goo part of it. Um, uh, about 140 kilometers northeast of Calgary. Is calling his property a. Oh, my thing got cut off. Um, was it House of Parsons? I think he said. He's looking for religious status. Yeah. Um. So he had his license revoked. Uh, on the zoo, and it was given a seven-day permit to make decommissioning plans, and uh, so he locked down his property and vowed to invoke the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. Prior to that, he entertained offers from taxidermists for his exotic animals and considered asking for a new license. Um, On Wednesday, he filled out a declaration of incorporation of a religious society to make the zoo a sanctuary of worship for the protection of animals. Oh, good grief. Okay. So, I want you to think about that one for a minute. That he decided to make a zoo... A sanctuary of worship for the protection of animals. But that was his second option. His first option was to sell the animals to taxidermists. Yeah, this guy's a real animal rights activist, isn't he? <laughs> well, <laughs> my plan to kill him and stuff him and mount him on a wall didn't work out, so now I want to protect him. <laughs> I got a bad feeling about this. I'm sorry, but I have more respect for our Jedi friends. <laughs> well, if there's a bright center to the universe, you're on the planet that it's farthest from. Yeah, oh, I have a lot more respect for those guys. Guys, we're sorry we made fun of you. I mean, compared to this guy, he's a... You know, I mean, oh, man. 
Yeah, there's this just a you know sort of glorified version of Zen Buddhism. This is ridiculous. <laughs> well, this is just a guy, you know, uh, 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 you know, pulling the, t- the the religious exemption just to pull the religious exemption. Uh, you know, earlier, you know, I I was joking. You know, I can get away with wearing my baseball cap. I'm a member of the religious order of St. Louis Cardinals. Yeah. That's, That's basically stuff. what he's doing here. Yeah. Freedom of religion. <laughs> Yeah, I'm uh, starting my own religion, the worship of animals, that I don't get stuffed. The, the, or maybe I mean, you can't stuff them and bow down. They can be your own little doggy or cat, doggy and cat animals or, <laughs> or, or idols or something. Yeah, there you go. It's an idol now. <laughs> yeah, this is... Uh... Uh, darn. Train of thought just left. Um... <laughs> Uh, yeah, there is a plan B and would most likely involve lawyers. Yeah, <laughs> you might. <laughs> Just might. <laughs> um, I think the, the real plan B should involve realtors. <laughs> you need to sell the property before it's seized. <laughs> right. That would be, yeah. Oh, man. And not doing any good because it won't stop decommissioning the zoo. Has no bearing on our decommission order. He can call it what he wishes, but it's still captive animals that need to be properly managed. <laughs> End of right. story. Yeah, yeah. See, and that's the thing. He's not properly managing the animals, right? And yet he's claiming something about, you know, protection of animals, right? They need protection from you. This is, oh, I know. Okay, here's here's my idea for sort of using this guy's mentality. I'm going to open a, an Italian restaurant and uh, claim tax-exempt status because it's uh, I'm filing under, it's uh, part of the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster. This is madness. Okay, go it's, for it. It's you, a religious you, organization. You and your church are flying, you know. I, I, what's the difference? I mean, you know. I don't know. I don't even get started. This is stupidity. Well, speaking of stupidity, uh, that brings us to our final story for tonight. Mm-hmm. Which is probably the most serious of the ones that we've looked at. Definitely very the serious, but stupid people. Um, and uh, there is this. This is out in Oregon. And um, Timothy and Rebecca Ryland. Now, I don't know, man, from this picture, he looks about 50, and she looks about 20. Or is that just me? I don't know. I'm a bad judge of age, but yeah. Uh, He looks considerably older than her. It says they face up to five years in prison. Yeah. But are likely to receive probation. Uh, They they deserve to be in prison. Uh, They um, are guilty of felony criminal mistreatment for treating their infant daughter with faith healing and taking her to a doctor. She um, had a, a growth um, of blood vessels called hemogloma, slowly engulfed her left eye and produced a goopy discharge. Despite the growth and the accompanying loss of vision, I mean, this kid couldn't have seen out of that eye, um, they, they did not consider a doctor. Instead, they prayed and prayed and prayed that God would heal this baby. Yeah. They're part of members this, of Oregon City's Followers of Christ Church. You right. know, to avoid which, that one. Um, um, which has had, which is, this is this is one of their, their beliefs, that you do not take any type of medicine or seek any kind of physician. You only pray. And... In two previous cases, this is this is the third church couple to be prosecuted in two years because they didn't get medical treatment for their kids. In the two previous cases, the kids died. In this case, uh, the kid got some medical care uh, under court order and um, is doing much better. Yeah, you know, I, I'm I'm trying to figure out what part of this bothers me the most, and, and I think it's the fact that the kid's being mistreated because I have real heart for kids that are abused. Okay. Um, or neglected. And, but the other part of this that really bugs me is, is there this whole concept of faith healing 
is cl- completely unscriptural. I mean, there is nothing in the Bible that says not to go to doctors or, or anything like that. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, there, there's people that will take, they'll talk about the sorcery in the Old Testament, where, it, well, the, well, the term there is in, actually in Greek, is pharmakoi, where we get our word pharmacy, and say, oh, well, see, that it's, it's, it's sorcery, right? It ain't sorcery. What they were doing back, back then was um, divination, and uh, they were looking at... Uh, at goat livers to try and determine the future based on the bumps and and stuff on the goat livers, right? Has nothing to do with science, and you know, and and for that matter, Luke, as in the Gospel of Luke, is referred to as the beloved physician. He was a doctor by trade, which is really obvious too when you read the Gospel of Luke, because he's the one that that makes all the sort of medical references. And he's he's very yeah. clearly a, a scientist and a um and and a physician because he's the one, for instance, that that points out Jesus' sweat became like great drops of blood, um, which is a medical condition. I mean, it's it's amazing that they spent you know all of one hour um, debating this, and uh, you know, uh, you know, I'm finding it amazing they spent one hour. And uh, the, the unanimous verdict against the couple. I'm sorry. Uh, I, could, have, could, have, could have lost her eye and lost all sight in that eye. And, uh, you know, it says that the swift unanimous verdict stunned them, their defense attorneys, um, and their 20 church house church, church, church members. Well, how in the, what would you, what would you expect? No kidding. I mean, you know, all you gotta do is take one look at that kid. You go, how could you possibly do that to a child? Right. I mean, you know, Jesus came to love us. This is a little child that Jesus died for. All right? He loves this little child. And you're treating him like that? You're treating God's child like that? And not giving her the this care that, that they, she needs? Uh, uh, what is it they said? Uh, uh, that they... Uh, Try the the, the the attorney. Their attorney tried to say after DHS got involved, they were fully cooperative. They uh, uh, went to all the doctor's appointments. They made sure she got her medicine. They did everything once the state got involved. But you know what? By the time the state got involved, it was almost too late. Mm-hmm. If the state hadn't gotten involved, your daughter would be blind in that eye. This sort of thing has cropped yeah. up before, and it has always been due yeah. to human error. Um. You know, and, 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 and. Sometimes I just don't understand human behavior. So. Any, any religion that, that teaches that child abuse is, is okay? That, that, that's a tenet of your religion? Uh, that's not Christianity. And, you know, that's, it's, that's right up there with saying it's okay according to your religion to have sex slaves. I think you know what the problem is just as well as I do. It's ridiculous. Sorry, you know, we we joke around a lot on this show. All right, this one, you talk about little kids, any child um, being put in danger. All right, we kind of joked around a little bit about the, you know, sex slaves at the age of 15, which is just as insane. All right. Um but I just, well, the only thing I thought of with that was the guy was 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 the actor who you know fifty and uh, ma- uh, 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 um, you know married the sixteen year old and who's uh, you know mom and dad thought that was a great idea so that, that was the first thing I thought of when I was you know looking at that they should be at least fifteen okay you know ay 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 but dude, this is even this is this this these 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 people should be shot and hanged. Nah, the other order, hanged and shot. Hmm. I mean, it's, this, that's, this is stupidity. Yeah, you do, you, 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 you know, you do what you have to for your kids. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we all say, maybe you disagree with us, we'd love to hear from you. All right, if you disagree with us on this one, I don't want to hear it. All right. Some of our other stories, maybe. All right. Uh, you know, we always like feedback. Okay. But if you think that it's okay for children to be abused or neglected because you're praying for them instead, I don't want to hear it. 
I, I, you'll, you will not convince me ever that that's okay. So don't bother. So I'm sorry. I, I hate to end the show on such a sour note. Um, so do you have anything else on this one? I have nothing else on this one. Uh, um, but hey, you know what? That's, that's okay because, uh, um, you know, we, we, it's just more ridiculous people out there. And, uh, you know, it's kind of sad when we come up with ridiculous people in the world, but there are that they do exist, unfortunately. I mean, we do want to hear from our, our viewers and listeners. We always like your feedback and, uh, and we welcome it. You can email us at podcast at crossfeednews.com, uh, or you can send us a, um, you can leave a comment on YouTube or, um, any of the other places where you happen to be watching this. Um, or you can, uh, we'd love it if you would go to over to the iTunes directory and leave a, a review there. Um, we did get some feedback, speaking of feedback, um, from our friend George uh, about our uh, episode 200. He says, happy 200th podcast, 200. Boy, you guys are getting old. No, Jim's getting old. I'm not. But... <laughs> He said, I like Pastor Dale's t-shirt, Mount Airy. That's the name of my alma mater, uh, LTSP Lutheran Theological Seminary at Philadelphia. It's in the Mount Airy section of Philadelphia, just north of Germantown. So the sem is affectionately known as Mount Airy. Um, well, my Mount Airy shirt was actually um, uh, Wright State, Pennsylvania. Um, but in this case, it was uh, the Mount Airy Lodge up in the Poconos where my wife and I uh, honeymooned. Um, it has since been converted to a casino, so we won't be going back there for a second honeymoon. I was kind of disappointed when I found that out. Um, <clears throat> he says, uh, Crossfeed 199, you mentioned about the Mormons had a rule for women missionaries that they had to wear nylon pantyhose being recently rescinded. Boy, that would be a tough thing for people serving in the tropics. I used to feel bad for the little babies in Liberia. Their moms would bundle them up so tight, like in swaddling cloths, to be King James scriptural. I'm old enough to be a King James scriptural kid. Now, you don't have to feel so lonesome. At least you have one comment. God's richest blessings on your hobby ministry. So, thanks, George. Appreciate the comment. I always appreciate comments from our listeners and viewers. So. Yeah, it, uh, um, actually, as I recall, uh, um, uh, you know, they, they often, you know, they had all these things. I remember back the ELCA, the LCA, and ALC. Uh, but when our seminary split, well, they often forget, of course, the fact they had their own seminary splits. And um, the and Lutheran School of Theology of Philadelphia was actually part of the General Council and started by George Porterfield Kraut. It was a split from uh, the Lutheran Seminary in Gettysburg at the time, which uh, did not. Um, which they uh, uh, had become too liberal. And so Krauth and company parted company and started the General Council, which was very close at one time to being actually in fellowship with the Missouri Synod. Hmm. But we had our disagreements. But uh, it's interesting, but to, to, uh, now you can buy uh, Charles Porterfield's Krauth's very famous book, uh, The Conservative Reformation and Its Theology, uh, from CPH. <laughs> <laughs> Not Augsburg Fortress Press, oddly enough. So, uh, but a little bit of history for that ba- and background for that particular uh, seminary. Your memory for that stuff is much better than mine. I remember studying it. I just don't remember the details. Oh, I see. I, yeah, I, oh, I remember that, those details quite well. Um, although I've never been to LST and uh, to that seminary, I have seen the Gettysburg Seminary when I went to visit Gettysburg. Only got to be the only seminary in the world that has a cannon sitting in the middle of the quad. <laughs> cool. <laughs> so, uh, <All> right. <clears throat> but that kind of leads us on everything tonight, folks. Hey, thanks for watching. Thanks for being with us. You, your um, attention, and everything means a, it means a lot to us. It really does. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, yep. Thank you very much. Good night, everybody. And God bless. Thank you.